doing today? Good. I want to hear somebody talk though. Let me tell me one person how you doing today. Raise your hand. What's up? How you doing today? Good. What you do this morning? What's up? How you good? Tell me something good happened this week. Um, nothing. Nothing? Not one loving thing, not one faithful thing happened to you this week? Your mom tell you she loved you this week? I told my mom I loved her when I was Good, that's something good happened. Somebody else, what's up? This year, somebody tell me something good happened this year? You want to cruise? That's good. All right. All right. So let's talk real quick. Um, what I'm, I'm going to get into the lesson first, I'm going to talk to y'all about me so y'all know who I am. And so y'all can understand that I'm not somebody different than y'all at all. Okay. So I'll talk to you about my life a little bit. So basically, I grew up and my mom was, if you got a phone, can you put it flat on the table, please? Please put it flat on the table, on the screen side. Turn it over. Turn it over. Turn your phones over, okay? Because I'm not here to waste your time, I promise you, okay? So, um, growing up, I was, um, shoot, I'm a young black male, right? And my mom and my dad, when I was younger, um, divorced. How many people in here got divorced parents? So you might feel me today, okay? So, um, I was younger, my mom and my dad divorced. Um, then my mom ended up being a preacher and ended up like ministering and going around and um, being a preacher around Indiana. Does anybody have any parents that minister and preach or talk about God? There you go, y'all might feel me in this way too. Let's keep talking. So, and then I grew up and I played sports, a lot of sports. I played basketball, I played football. Um, I did track, but I didn't like track because I don't like running, for real. So that's kind of weird to explain to y'all, but I don't like running. Um, anybody play sports in here? All right, more people that can feel me. All right. So, I'm going to tell you when my life got real serious, and I didn't even know it. I was 15 years old, and I was playing a football game, and just like any other day, I got up that morning, and I got dressed and had breakfast. Um, I went and I was ready to go play in a football game. I did this every Saturday in the fall for most of my life, right? You play football, you do it every, in the fall all the time, right? I had this game this day that I've been playing my whole life. I've, I've been doing the same thing. I've been doing good at it my whole life. And I showed up this day and I, ha I got a brain bleed that day. And then later on, I found out that I died that day. And I was 15 years old. So I promise you today, I'm not about to waste your time because a lot of y'all are, are about to be 15, 15, or just past that. And trust me, this is worth your time today. So, <clears throat> talk to y'all about myself a little bit. Now I'm just gonna talk to y'all about what it means today. I'm talking to you about identity and what it means to be a child of God. Identity and what it means to be a child of God. Because it's something that all everybody in this room is struggling with right now. Is who am I? Who who am I? Who am I for real? Who are you for real? And I know that everybody in this room, has anybody ever thought to themselves, who am I? What am I gonna be in life? What's my career? Who am I? Raise your hand if you felt that before. Who am I? That's a good question to ask yourself. Who am I? Okay? Let's talk about this. At the very, very base foundation, what you should know, you should know that you are God's child. Is that right? Okay. So I'm going to read something to you, John 8, 41 to 42. This is what Jesus Christ said. He said, no, you are imitating your real father. They replied. So this is people out in the crowd talking to Jesus. We aren't illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. So let's talk about this. How do you know that you're a child of God? How do you know that? Because the reality is, Jesus Christ just told you that not everybody is a child of God. Do y'all understand that? 
Okay. So let me talk to you about this, how Jesus knew in his heart. He could walk around. He could talk like this. He could say, no, you're not a child of God. Because if you were, you would love me. And you understand that Jesus Christ, this is anybody, anybody in the world can walk up to somebody and, 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 and evaluate like this for real. Because what, is, what you're called to be as a child of God is you're called to love everyone. Do you hear me? Does everybody hear me? Does everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. You're called to love everyone. So Jesus Christ can walk up to you at any point in time and say something to you. And if you show him hate, he's going to tell you you're not a child of God. So that's one is understanding that love makes you a child of God. So, but what also makes you a child of God? What is a child of God? Everyone who believes that Jesus the Christ has become a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. So, just like I just said, if you're a child of God, you love everyone. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're a child of God, you love everyone. And if you're a child of God, how many people believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior? Okay, if you believe that, that's your first step to being a child of God. Now you're going to have the love to back it. So, let's talk about this. What was the first child of God like? So we're going to John 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. So... What's it like being a child of God? He literally tells you that Jesus Christ was the word. So guess what? If you're a child of God, you have to live for the word of God. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Does that make, no, for real, I want you to talk to me. Does it make sense? Because this is one of the most important conversations I can have with you in your whole life. Does that make sense? Yes. If you want to be a child of God, you have to live for the word of God. And that means a lot of things, though, because guess what? In your heart and in your opinions, you have a lot of opinions in your life that you done made. But a lot of times you read that book of what Jesus Christ said, and it's not the same thing that you thought. You have to let go of your opinion and live for his word. So that's number one. Number two, what it's like being a child of God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So let's talk about this real quick. As a child of God, you are called to be light in this world. As a child of God, you are called to be light in this world. Jesus Christ said this. He said, you are a light. I mean, you, yeah, he said, you're a light, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be, um, cannot be blocked. And he said, who puts a light under a basket? No, they sit it out for everyone in the house to see. So you understand that you're called to be a light. Can somebody do me a favor real quick and turn that light, turn that light off? How many people got cell phones in here? Pull them out. I'm about to explain to y'all something real quick, okay? So, as dark as it is right now, this is the world. This is what the world is like. It's very dark in this world. Does anybody, is it, people understand that yet? Do y'all understand this yet, how dark the world is? How evil people are, how mad people are, how judgmental people are, how um, opinionated people are. Have y'all realized that yet? Yeah. So that, that evilness in the world, in the Bible, was related to darkness. Okay? God calls us to be light. You have to understand that when God looks at this world, this is how dark he sees the world is. Okay? What makes you different in this world is your love. So now, if you're a child of God, I want you to flash the light on your phone real quick. Flash it up in the air. 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 So I want y'all to understand something as dark as this world is. No one it says that we are the light of the Father. No one can see the glory of God if you don't shine your light. No one can see God in this world if you don't shine your light. No one can see God in this world if you don't shine your light, if you don't shine your light, if you don't shine your light. Okay? 
I'm going to teach y'all what light is in a second, but you have to understand first that you have a calling in your life to be different than the world. The world is very dark, and you're called with your one little light to shine it for real and be different. Can you hit that light real quick? I appreciate it. So, so the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And, he, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So understand this. Jesus Christ who came into the world who was the word, who was light. He was filled with two things in this world. If you have a phone, put it down face flat. I'm not wasting your time. When he came into this world, he was filled with two things, okay? Unfailing love and faithfulness. And actually, I got to take a pause because I got to tell you another story real quick, okay? Because it's going to help some of y'all out in y'all minds right now. So, Jesus Christ told this story, okay? He told a story about, everybody. I want everybody to look at me right now. And then if you decide not to look at me after I tell you this story, that's on you. I'm not going to say nothing else again, okay? So listen, Jesus told this story about soil and seeds. Everybody look at me. It's not that hard to look at me. So he told this story about seeds and soil. And he told a story about concrete first. He says, so a farmer throws down seeds on concrete. And because it's concrete, the seeds never get into the soil. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. It's concrete, so seeds never went into it. Then the birds come and take the seeds away. The second type of soil is shallow soil. So when you, the farmer throws the seeds down on the shallow soil, it goes down to the soil quickly, but because there's no deep root of it, it grows fast. But when the sun hits the flower, it dies immediately. Y'all get that? Okay. The third one is about fertile soil. So this, this type of soil is good soil to put seeds into. But when the seed, when the plants grew and when the garden grew, it was held back by the thorns that were around the plant. The last type of soil is fertile soil with no thorns and no weeds. So we put the seeds down on that and it comes, it grows up to be everything supposed to be a beautiful garden. I'm going to explain to you this story real quick. Everybody look at me. I'm going to explain this story real quick because you have to look at yourself for a second. The first one, concrete, is somebody with no faith. And all of you in here are one of these four, one of these four types of soil. So look at yourself right now, for real. The first one is concrete. And what happens is the concrete, the soil, is your mind. The seed is the words coming out of my mouth, God's word that I'm giving you right now. So understand, on, when it's concrete and your mind's concrete and I give you God's word, what happens is I throw the seeds down and the birds come and take it right away. You know what the, who the birds are? The birds are the devil. So understand that when I talk to you and I'm trying to give you God's word and it's not going in your mind and you're not thinking about it, that's the devil taking away from you. The second type of soil is shallow soil. So that's somebody that is, you know, religious. Um, they show up on Sunday. When times get hard, they want God. And what happens is they get those seeds and it becomes something really good in their life right away. But the sun hits the plant, and it dies quickly. Does anybody know what the sun is? The sun is life. So life gets hard, and as soon as life gets hard, you forget about everything God has taught you. The third type of soil is fertile soil with thorns. And that type of soil is, is a good, good mind. They love God. They want a relationship with God. But when they get God's word, you have fear in your life. You have fear of your life changing. You have fear of someone ch leaving your life. You have fear of the personality that you've grown, people not liking who you are no more because you done changed. You have fears in your life. So then God's word never becomes what's supposed to be in your life. And the last type of soil is good soil that gets God's word. And what happens is you have no fears in your life. So it becomes everything it's supposed to be. 
So I really do challenge y'all today to open your mind up a little more than where you were before you came in here right now. And understand that the only time, only reason why God's word would not sink in your mind is only because of the devil. And don't let him do that to you today. All right, I'm going to continue. So, so the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So let's talk about this, who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is the word. Jesus Christ is light. And understand that this word and this light is filled with two things, unfailing love and faithfulness. Does anybody, everybody understand what unfailing love is? Yes. What's unfailing love? Who said yes? What is it? It's like, um, it'll never go away. Stand right there. So, she is a child of God, okay? So, she's filled with two things, unfailing love and faithfulness. I am going to behave like a child of the devil. There's only two things you can be in this world, okay? Can everybody see her? Yeah. Everybody? Good. All right. You stink. I love you. <laughs> you ugly. I love you. What kind of shoes you got on? I love you. What are those? I love you. What kind of hair you got? I love you. Man, who brought that shirt? I love you. Man, what? You put deodorant on? <laughs> <laughs> Understand for real. This is what a child of God looks like. This is what unfailing love looks like. And understand how foolish and how dumb do I look if I keep talking crazy to her and all she has to do is save me and she loves me. I look real evil, don't I? Mm -hmm. This is the first lesson I really got for y'all, for real. There are going to be evil people in this world. You don't have to be like them. You don't have to retaliate to everything someone does to you. Because guess what? If she retaliated, you know what's going to happen to her on her heart? She's going to go home and she's going to be stressed out that she treated me bad. Well, why didn't this work? Why didn't this go right? But because all she did was love, her heart is clean. Her conscience is clear. And she can have peace in her heart. Go ahead. Yeah. Does everybody get what unfilling love is? Do you understand how you're called to have that type of love in your life? Okay. Faithfulness. Unfilling love and faithfulness. So what am I called to do as a child of God? Let's talk about this. So a man came to Jesus Christ one day, and he said, Teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these, two, on these commandments. I'm going to give y'all a secret real quick to make y'all life a whole lot easier that the Bible has been trying to teach everybody from day one. Not day one, since Jesus came into the world. Okay? So, I want you to tell me this. I want you to tell me this. How can you be perfect in your life? Put the camera on. You the oldest one here. You ain't got no answer for nobody? Somebody got an answer for me? Okay. You can't be? That's a good answer. Anybody else got an answer for that? Okay. Let's talk about this. So, in your life, you know, you had a good answer. You can't be. You physically cannot be perfect in your life. You can't be. And that's why you know there's a whole bunch of th uh, things that your people, your parents done told you, uh, you didn't learn in church, a whole bunch of things of what not to do, right? Somebody tell me something not to do that you know is wrong. Don't talk about anybody. Don't talk about people. Lie. Don't lie. Come on. 
Don't bully and harass. Don't hate. Don't hate. Don't steal. Don't steal. Um, don't kill. Don't kill. Don't disrespect your parents. Don't disrespect your parents. Okay. So let's talk about this real quick. Jesus Christ came into this world, and he just said two commands, okay? And none of them had to do with what not to do. None of them had anything to do with what not to do. He told you two things to do. And this is how you're made perfect in God's eyes. It's by loving God with all your soul, all your heart, and all your mind, and by loving one another. Does everybody hear me? Does everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm being serious. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. Because listen, this how this this corrects everything in your life. So who said don't steal? You said don't steal, right? Don't so don't who said don't steal? You said don't steal? Okay. So why would I still why would I steal from you if I love you? don't love people you can steal but if I love you am I gonna steal from you no who said bully and harass so if I love you would I bully and harass you no. okay who said don't kill if I love <coughs> you would I kill you hmm. so I'm trying to teach y'all something real quick that Jesus Christ came here to teach us you do not have to live your life worrying about trying to be perfect. You don't have to do that. You don't have to live your life saying, okay, don't do this. I can't do this. Don't do this. I can't do this. Don't do this. I can't do this. You can live your life by two principles, and it's going to make everything right in your life. If you love God, so if you have faith, and if you love one another, if I love God and I love one another, God will look at me and he'll be happy with who I am. Okay? To love everyone. Someone else. You can live your life by two principles. You can live your life by two principles, right? That's what Jesus came here and said. What else? Somebody else got something for me? Love makes you a child of God. Love makes you a child of God. Love makes you a child of God. All right, I'm going to keep going. Y'all learning right now. So, uh, why follow these commands? So, let's talk about this. In Deuteronomy 13.3, it says, The Lord your God, it says, The Lord your God is testing you to see if you truly love him with all your heart and soul. So, understand this. Everything that you're doing in your life is a test. Everything in your life is a test. Is everybody looking at me and listening real quick? Because yeah. this is how you escape a lot of hurt in your life, for real. Everything in your life is a test. God put you here to see, are you going to follow his two commands? Are you going to love God, and are you going to love one another? And that's all your life is about. That's your identity as a child of God, is loving God and loving people. And so for real, understand this, is that in your life, you're going to be tested over and over and over and over again. Because guess what? If you're God, are you going to bring somebody to heaven that hasn't shown you they can live in peace? Or are you going to bring somebody to heaven that has shown you they can live in peace? You have to show God every day you can live in peace. As a child of God, because a child, children of God, guess what? You don't live for this world. You live to go to heaven, right? Who all wants to go to heaven? Show the hands real quick. Or keep your hand up. Who all wants to go to heaven? So to understand your number one identity in this world has to be to be a child of God. So when y'all get y'all little Instagrams and Twitters and Facebooks and all those things, if you don't know what to talk about yourself as, the number one thing you can put on there 
is that you're a child of God. And that's the, one of the realest things I can say to you for real. That should be your number one identity in this whole situation. So, what makes me different as a child of God? You understand, when you're a child of God, you don't look like the rest of the world. Because cause guess what? Who's my, who's my example? Who's my example? What, would the rest of the world, if I was talking to you like that, would you say I love you back? What, if you was a part of the rest of the world? No. No. You're not going to look like the rest of the world, so stop trying to look like somebody else. Stop trying to look like somebody else. Stop trying to look like a crowd of people. Stop trying to have this big group of friends that y'all all the same. You're not going to look like everybody else. You're not. This is what Jesus Christ said. So what is it like to be a child of God? He said this, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world will love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of the world, so it hates you. Do you remember what I told you? A slave is, a slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would have listened to you. So understand this. Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came to this world. And he was only about 30, 30 years old. And they decided to put him on a cross and kill him. He was the first child of God. If you're living your life for God the right way in love, not everyone is going to love you. Do y'all hear me? Yes. Now, another child of God is going to love you. But a child of this world is not going to love you. So that's one thing you got to do right now is stop trying to find acceptance in this world for who you are. Stop trying to find acceptance in this world for who you are. Because guess what? I'm going to tell you all the truth. The people who have millions of followers and stuff like that, does that sound like what Jesus just said? He said the world would hate you. So don't believe that having thousands and millions of followers makes you a good person. It makes you a right person. It makes you a great person. It doesn't. They're being deceived. Understand for real that if you're a child of God, what it looks like for real, and be honest with yourself, it looks like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had 12 real people that, will be, that lived his life with him for real. There were crowds that listened, but they came and went. There was 12, really, that loved him. So understand in your life for real, when you're going you to go in school, you're going to be in school and stuff like that, and you're going to see you're gonna see these people who have these big groups of friends and stuff like that. You know the truth. Do y'all know the truth now? So why be jealous of them? That's like being jealous of the devil. It's like being jealous of the devil. Why be jealous of them? You're called, you're, you're called, you're going to be different. Not everyone is going to love you. And you have to be okay with that. And understand that's what Jesus promised you. That's how you know you're going to heaven. Do y'all hear me? Yes. So if you know that you're loving in everything you do, right? And you know you love God in everything you do, right? And you see that the world is not accepting you so much. What does that mean? Someone tell me what that means? It means you're a child of God. It means you're a child of God. Thank you. Did you hear what he said? So let's say it together really quick. I want you to hear this and hear this in your heart right now. If I'm loving in everything that I do, I'm showing faith and I'm loving God in everything that I do. And the world isn't accepting me, then what am I? A child of God. Thank you. I'm a child of God. So let's keep going real quick. So, 
Because right now, being a child of God don't really sound that great in his life. It don't do it. No. It, it don't. It don't. I know it don't. Okay? Let's talk, though. So, what perks are there from being a child of God? Being God's child. So, in this life, this is what, this is what uh, Jesus Christ said. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. What is the perk of being a child of God? The perk is peace. The perk is peace. Okay? So, I'm going to explain this to y'all a little more. God is the God of peace. Do y'all understand that? And y'all understand the devil is, he's only here to kill, steal, and destroy, right? So that's not peaceful, right? That's chaos. So he just loves chaos, right? <coughs> you got to understand that, that God, and being a child of God, he wants to give you peace. So I got to tell you about a story real quick. Jesus... Jesus told a story, and he talked about how he went into the wilderness to fast, right? And when he was fasting, the devil was talking to him. Does everybody in here understand that the devil is in your thoughts, it's in your mind? Do y'all understand that yet? Do you understand that? Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, the devil is not a physical person that's going to run up on you and kill you, okay? He's not. He's going to make you think wrong, but he's not going to run up on you and kill you, okay? So... Jesus went into the wilderness to go and, and fast and to be tempted by the devil. And so the devil was talking to him. And y'all don't understand this, is that we all have the same battles in our minds. So some of y'all are sitting in here and thinking like, dang, I'm stressed sometimes. Some of y'all are sitting here and be like, dang, sometimes I feel depressed. Dang, sometimes I feel like this. Everybody in here has felt depressed. Everybody in here has felt anxiety. Everybody in here has felt stress. You are not alone. And that's one of the first things you have to understand about life is everybody in life is or go, every, everyone. I don't care who it is. Your sister, your brother, your mom, your grandma, your, your son, your daughter. You don't have sons and daughters. But everyone is going through something in their mind. Do y'all understand that? I'm serious, talk to me because I'm trying to talk to y'all. Do y'all understand that for real? If you don't understand it, let me know you don't understand it so I can help you out. We are all going through the same things in our minds. Jesus Christ was led to a ledge by the devil, right? And the devil was in his mind and told him, jump. God will surely send his angels to grab you by your feet and whisk you into safety. And then Jesus said, the scriptures say, don't test the Lord your God. So from that story, you have to understand that Jesus Christ himself was contemplating jumping off a cliff. He was contemplating hurting himself. So understand that everybody in life has issues and everybody has chaos going on in their mind. The perk of being God's child and following Jesus Christ is having peace in your mind. The perk of having Jesus Christ and following God is having peace in your mind. Has anybody, does anybody know what, and y'all are young, but I want y'all to be honest with me. Has anybody here ever been sad before? Put your hands in the air. So, sadness is just depression, man. Has anybody ever been worried before? Worry is just anxiety. Has anyone ever been shocked and hurt before because something happened? I, I, right, right away, something happened, I was just hurt. That's just trauma. Understand that you guys all go through the same things in your minds. All of you do. God and Jesus Christ, he wants to help you have peace in your mind. 
That's his whole goal in your life. Don't be deceived. Because this life will show you a lot of things. It'll show you money. It'll show you a house. It'll show you cars. It'll show you a lot of things. But how many, so have, has anybody here ever seen God before? Anybody? Has anybody ever seen God before? No, right? That's because God is an unseen God. Does that make sense? Do y'all understand what I'm saying to you? God is not somebody you can see, right? So understand that what he wants to give you and what he wants to give you in your life is he wants to help you out with your unseen problems. Do y'all understand that? Yes. You cannot depend on God. Guess what? God is a, is a God of healing and self-reflection within yourself. He wants to help you with what you can't see about yourself, your thoughts, what's hurting you inside. Because things out here don't really hurt that bad, but when it happens in here, it hurts pretty bad, don't it? Because guess what? You don't cry from stuff out here. You cry because of what's in here, right? Yes. So understand that Jesus is truly here and Jesus and being a, a child of God is truly about the peace that he wants to give you. But you have to listen. Do y'all hear me? Yes. You have to listen. You cannot do it on your own. And I promise you, you're going, y'all are going to go and try to do it on your own. And one day you're going to see what I'm saying to you. You cannot do it on your own. So, come be my, my uh, example again. You want me to do somebody else or you want to come be it? Come on, come be it. So, this is what I mean when I say you cannot do it on your own. Come over here real quick. So, me and her are, um, y'all growing up, man. Y'all trying to get relationships and stuff. Me and her relationship, okay? And so, basically... Let's say that we're arguing, we're getting arguments and stuff like that, right? And um, I want you to make up an issue, man. What's your problem with me? making no money. Mm -hmm. What money are you making? What are you? Huh? What are you? More than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see how hard I'm working every day? You talking about more than me? Mm -hmm. What does that even mean, bro? What are you saying right now? All I do for you, all I do for this house, you talking about some money? Yes. And that's all you care about? Yes. That's all you care about? Mm -hmm. So what about the love I done gave you? What about our child? Mm -hmm. What about our home? What about all them things you, do that you don't care? Mm -hmm. Okay, so listen real quick. You cannot do it on your own, okay? You cannot do it on your own, but now watch this. Okay, let's make this obvious too. So my partner right here is a child of God, okay, right? So you're Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, say the same thing again. Um, not making up money. I'm not making up money. All right, well, but Jesus Christ said this though, sweetheart. Jesus Christ said that, you can't be enslaved to money and serve God. So what do you want me to do? I don't know. You don't know. So listen, this is my point to y'all. I said one line back to her, and we she can't argue with me no more. Because Jesus Christ is her Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So we agree on truth. You cannot do it on your own. I cannot argue with her and get her to see that I'm trying my best. Because that's not what she believes. I cannot sit here and try to change her mind about anything from my perspective. But I can give her wisdom that Jesus Christ has said. And if that's both of our Lord and Saviors, how could we not agree and be at peace? Do y'all understand that? You can't do it on your own. Do y'all get it? All right, go ahead, sit down. Is that you understand this? Is that like people who don't follow, people who don't follow 
Jesus Christ's teachings and, and God's word and stuff like that, you understand what, what they look like. They may look really great in front of you, but in their mind is a bunch of chaos for real. They can't never fix arguments like this. They can't never go to their spouse and just talk peacefully. They can't go to work with peace in their hearts and just fix the issue through communication. They're the ones you see shooting. And they're the ones you see stabbing people. And they're the ones you see murdering people. And the ones you see stealing from people. Without Jesus Christ, you can't do it. You need him. And that one simple line wasn't that deep. But it was enough to stop you from arguing with me, wasn't it? It made you think a little bit. You have to know Jesus Christ to get through your life. If you ever want to stop arguing with people, if you ever want to have peace in your life, you have to know Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to y'all? A little more? Cool, move on. Keep, keep going, we're almost done. How much time? So, that's your perk in this life is peace, right? But what's your perk of being a God, God's child? What's the number one reason for, to be God's child? Y'all, what is, what's, that, what's the reason? Hmm? Everlasting, life. Everlasting life to go to heaven, right? What would be? What's the point of doing all this if you're not going to heaven? Is there a point at that point? No. You want to go to heaven, right? Yes. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Okay, so listen real quick. So he said, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. So understand, if you want to go to heaven, if you want God to be your everlasting father for a life that never ends one day, you have to start now. You have to start now. You have to start now. How many people in here have been baptized? Okay. Understand, that's your start. But now you got a journey to go through. Now you signed up for the game. You said, I, you said God, I want to go to heaven. But now guess what? Now guess what determines if you go to heaven? Your love. Your love. Your love. Can you love no matter what? Can you love God no matter what? And he, he's trying to tell you he will be your father forever. And you will be his child forever. But you have to start right now identifying yourself as a child of God in everything you do. And that comes before your, what's your first name? Marquise. Hmm? Well, guess what? Child of God comes before Marquise. What's your name? Zion. You said Zion? Child of God come before Zion. What's your name? Gino. Gino? Mm -hmm. Child of God come before Gino. Because guess what? Marquise, what's your name again? Zion. Marquise, Zion, and Gino. Marquise, Zion, and Gino will lead you wrong. But God won't. What you think will lead you wrong. But God and what Jesus told you will not lead you wrong. Because guess what? Sometimes in your heart, Gino, you done probably had a girl that's made you upset. Right? Mm -hmm. And guess what? Gino himself says, oh, I'm Gino. I'm Gino. Girls <laughs> should love me. Who don't deserve to love Gino? I'm Gino. <laughs> but guess what? 
if child of God come before Gino, you got to put yourself aside and understand what you live in this life for. Are you living this life for Gino or for God? For God. And what makes God happy? I told you the two things. Who knows it? What is it? Love. Love. What, what's two specific ways I said? Faith. Love. Faith. Tell me two commands Jesus said. Two commands. I told y'all two commands Jesus said. Love God and love others, right? So, Gino. I'm Gino. Girls love me. I deserve all the love in the world. Mm. Ain't no girl gonna ever disrespect me. Mm. I'm me. And they're them. So why do I get disrespected? Mm -hmm. It's not about you. Who are you living this life for? God. God. If you're living this life for God, you're going to love God no matter what. And you're going to love people no matter what. Because it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. Because let me tell you a secret, Gino, okay? You were made, right? And yes, the, yes we were made perfect in God's image and, and like that. Because guess what? When you were a child, you were born. God, you was perfect to God. You were perfect. You just loved and you were just understanding. And you didn't think. You didn't have an opinion. He loved. You were perfect to him. But guess what? Gino grew up. Because guess what, Gina? You ain't, you ain't walking around like that no more. So you grew up and got an opinion, got a personality, and got all these things. This you, this Gino, right? He, didn't have, he has an opinion about what makes Gino happy, right? You got to let go of your opinion about what makes you happy and live for what makes God happy if you want to go to heaven. Because I'm going to tell you the truth, where the devil is truly at. The, the devil deceives Gino. It makes him think that life is only about Gino. And that's how he keeps Gino away from God. Don't let the devil deceive you and make you think that life is only about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. So, I move on. I'm almost done. We'll be out of here. So let's talk about this. Like I said, it's hard being, it's hard being a child of God. Because guess what? She was just standing right here, right? And I'm just saying all these negative things to her, right? And then she has this obligation to God just keep telling me she loves me, right? But that's hard, ain't it? They call that persecution. That's hard. When someone just keeps coming at you, keeps coming at you, keeps coming at you, trying to drive you down pull you down. You got to keep having, having love. But guess what? God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. You are guaranteed to be tested and tried and tested and tried with evil in this life. I promise you, you're going to leave here today and someone's going to test you. It's going to, it, literally, God's going to send someone in your life today to see if you're going to continue loving them and loving God based on what comes out of their mouth. You have to be above it all and be wise to know what this life is really about. Because someone arguing with you and coming at you negatively, they don't understand what life's about. But you do. So what's your excuse? What's your excuse? You don't have one. That's exactly how God can look at you too. You don't have an excuse. So, I'm going to end off with this. Let's talk about this, who you are and who you aren't. <coughs> First, I'm talking about who you aren't. Okay? This is who the devil influences you to be. So, the devil, they call this sinful nature. So, basically, we have this nature of our flesh. Understand this. Let's talk about this real quick. Who you are who you, who you aren't. You're, you are not your physical body. Does everybody understand that? Do you understand it for real? If you don't understand it, tell me the truth that you don't understand that. 
Do you understand that you're not your physical body? You don't, does everybody understand that? Okay, you don't understand that? Not really? So, understand how you think, right? And you have thoughts inside of you that nobody can see? There's a you that nobody can see. Right? You get that, right? Yeah. And that you that nobody can see isn't always what's expressed in your physical body, right? Yeah. So there's two of you. You get it? Yeah. Okay. So listen, who you are and who you're not, you're not your flesh. Okay? You're not your flesh. I'm going to tell you another secret. You have to understand that you are a spirit in the body. Because guess what? Guess your, your flesh is influenced by the devil for real. He makes you want to just go out and um, um, be uh, sexually immoral. He makes you want to go out and, and, and drink your life away. He makes you want to get angry and get jealous and do all these things. He makes you have emotion that gets sad and does all these things. But understand that there's two of you. Okay? And so who you're not, let's talk about this. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Is everybody listening? Yeah. Yeah. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I had before that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm going to say that list again, for real. Do y'all hear me? Because this is a clear list of when the devil is influencing you in your life. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, Dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. That is when you know the devil is influencing you in your life. And one of the biggest ones for humans, everybody, and humankind, for real, to understand for real, is division. Because guess what? Do you think in heaven that there's going to be this group of heavenly people and this group of heavenly people? Or you think everybody's going to live in peace together? That's how you're called to live right now on this earth. That's, those are the, the, the people he wants to keep in heaven. Who can decide, no matter what, who's around me, I'm going to love. So let's, let's talk about this. So that's who you're not, but this is who you are. Okay? So... But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So understand that any time that anything in your life produces love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that is God in your life. Anything that does the opposite is not God in your life. It's not. It's not. So don't be deceived by your thoughts. Because your thoughts will tell you a lot of things are God that are not. God did not tell you to stop loving somebody. He didn't. God did not tell you to abandon somebody. He didn't. God did not tell you to go get drunk. He didn't. God did not tell you to not care about somebody. He didn't tell you that. So Farouk just understands a child of God, who you are, and what you're called to be in this world, and what makes you a child of God. Okay? So, this is what I'm going to do real quick, and then I'm going to let y'all, y'all can ask some questions if y'all want to, but I'm going to ask y'all some questions. When I talk to you, how do I know you're a child of God? Because of love, right? What are the two things that Jesus asked you to do in your life? Hmm? That's part of love. 
Mm, here, right here. Loving and loving others. Loving God and loving others, right? Who? Cool. Ask you again. What's two things God asked you to do in your life? <coughs> and loving others. Cool. Um, somebody tell me one result of listening to the devil. Hurting yourself? No. The, the last thing, the last thing that I just said about. Go ahead. Pass. Hmm? I'm a pass. You gonna pass? One result. Somebody got one result. I just said a bunch of things that happens when you listen to the devil. You start being a mean person. You start being a mean person. That's true. Go ahead. Hostility. Hostility. I gave you all a list, right? Getting drunk. Huh? Division. Division. Thank you. Good things. So, what what happens when you listen to God? What are some things I just told you happen when you listen to God? Kindness. Kindness. Peace. Love. Respect is, is part of that. Took your word. Anybody else got something for me? You got something for me? Cool. So tell me this. In your life, what is the one thing that, so I gave you all an example. We turned the lights off. What do you call to be in this world when it's so dark? Light. Light. What is, what is your light supposed to be filled with? Love and what else? And faith. Love and faith. Good. So, I hope y'all understand a little more about identity and what it means to be a child of God for real. Did that help everybody out? Yes. Helped you out. Good. Anybody got any questions? They want to grow? Anything? Any thoughts? Anybody want to share anything? Go ahead. What do I do for a living? So, I own a training business that I also accompany with like you know, a ministry. Cause like what happens is they come in, I work them out, and then at the end I give them a little God's word segment to help them out with their day. And um, you know, so that's what I do. In my life. I mean, really, first and foremost, for real, like I really like work for God for real first, and that's truly like a decision you got to make in your life is who who you living to make happy. So. How did you die when you was 15? How did I die when I was 15? Well, simply put, I got hit in the head and I had a, literally had a bleed right here on my brain and I um, died. I had an experience and then I went to the hospital and it dried up the next morning. And um, I ended up being okay, but I had to start my life over for real. Like I had to relearn how to tie my shoes and how to get dressed in the morning. I had to relearn everything for real. So, but yeah, that's how I died. Any more questions? Wait, you had to learn how to walk again? No, I didn't learn how to walk again. That's something I just knew, but I didn't really know how I knew. You know, it just was there. <laughs> so. I had to learn how to tie my shoes. I had to put clothes on and brush my teeth, though. So that's enough to, to humble me. <laughs> Any, anything else? <coughs> Any other questions? I have another What's up? Um, you have a retirement plan? You have a retirement plan in heaven. What else? <laughs> I own a training business. I, I work people out, and I give them, um, I couple it with a ministry, so I give people like God's word and end of day workout and stuff. Do I like it? I love what I do now. I love what I do now, because now, I'm going to tell you what I did. I'm going to tell you the truth about money and everything, okay? I, so I graduated from college in 2017, and I don't know if y'all, you, you don't know. Um, I played football at IU. And, um, you know, my life was, was really centered around football most of my life. Like, I had, when I was in high school, I had, like, 32 Division I offers. I went to college, and my first year in college, I started, um, I started on the football team and stuff. And, but I ended up getting injured at the beginning of my sophomore year, and I stopped playing football. But I ended up... Um, I got a couple jobs. Like I was working. I was a Special Olympics uh, director, 
And, um, you know, I had my training business, and I was also a coach at, at Pike High School. Um, but what happened was, honestly, like, I came into my calling, like, with God for real. Like, at some point, you know, you have to, you're truly called to put God over this world and money and everything for real. And it got to a point where at my Special Olympics job, I couldn't even talk about God. I couldn't say nothing about God. I couldn't share a, a verse to help a situation out. And I'm like, God is the only answer. Just like I just showed y'all, right? I just showed y'all, right? That God is the only answer. And like, without God, it's truly just chaos. And I was just tired of living in chaos. So like, I ended up letting go of the job I had with Special Olympics. And I made like $20,000 a year at that job. I let it go. Um, I was coaching at Pike and I couldn't talk about God. Like I, like I felt like I needed to there to have peace in my heart and give peace to other people. I had to let it go, stop coaching. But I do love what I do now. Like, I do love what I do now. It gives me a lot of peace in my heart, and I know it makes God happy. So it may, that makes me happy because I truly do live my, my life for what makes God happy for real, and that's all that matters for real because if you want to go to heaven, that's all that should matter in your heart for real. Anybody else? We good? Yes. Did y'all learn today? Yes. Great. I had a good time with y'all, man. Good work. Have a good day. You too.